Alright folks, what is up? This is one big bug and I'm coming at you with Euro Truck Simulator 2. First thing I did update uh, my Jazzy Cat mods, my rebuilding Poland mod, I redid that. Uh, I took out the one mod that has old definitions and that was the truck that I added into the game. Uh, which we haven't found yet anyway, so we might as well stick for the, with the Mercedes for now until I find another truck that I like or somebody updates uh, the other ones. Um, other than that, I don't know what else to say. I took out some older Jazzy Cat mods, replaced them with newer ones. Everything's 1.9 guaranteed now. Um, I don't know if it's going to fix the painted truck thing. Plus, there's the load order. I actually have painted trucks loading last. It's the lowest priority on the queue right now. Basically, it goes my uh, Poland rebuilding is the first. And then um, uh, Pro Mods loads after. Uh, the Pro Mod patch loads after the Pro Mods. And then all of the Jazzy Cat stuff in whatever order they happen to load. Except for Painted Trucks, which I put all the way to the bottom. Now, the interesting thing about this, I'm looking at my truck and I notice no lights. Where did my lights go? You see my bull bar? You see my top bar? I've got no lights. Why is that? That's awfully strange. Did they accidentally get removed? <sighs> well, we're just going to have to find a garage at some point. That rather sucks. That really sucks that my lights are gone. I hope it's not something in the mods that like changed it. And now I can't see the lights I had. My orbitals are still there. So, I don't know. If we make it to the town that has the ferry then uh, there's, there'll be a garage there. I'll just put them back on, hopefully. So the trick will be to watch for painted trucks and see if they have a trailer. And unfortunately, there goes one maybe without. It was kind of hard to tell. It looked like it was just green. But I have only Jazzy Cat mods, Pro mods, and uh, Poland Rebuilding. And somebody said they, they re-downloaded Poland Rebuilding, re-stitched it together, and their problems with the painted trucks uh, went away. So that's what I did. I um, loosened up the steering wheel a little bit. I reloaded... I deleted Pro Mods, re-downloaded it, re-stitched it together, and put it back in. So if it's not that, then it's just priority that's screwing it up or something. Well, there's a truck towing a trailer, but it's not painted. But I do see what... No, this is a straight truck, isn't it? No, no, no. But again, it's not painted. Or it doesn't look painted. And you're not painted either. Maybe having that one load last has taken the painted trucks out. That could be a thing, and I may have to move them up. But we saw what looked like a painted truck heading up, didn't we? I may have to move the priority again. Fortunately, it didn't set me back to a garage, so I doubt changing the pri I'm almost 100% positive. Changing the priority is not going to matter on the truck. Uh, on the mods, rather. I've been having a lot of fun with uh, World of Warships, and I know I keep promising promising you gameplay, but I just learned the new patch is like two days away, and I'd rather try and start after the patch if I'm to be truthful with you. So we're just going to try it after the patch. Because the new patch coming out is going to rebalance a lot of things. So we 
shall see what happens. See, here comes a truck the other way, and he's running Bobtail. Couldn't tell if he was painted or not. Almost didn't realize this was a corner. It's kind of one of the reasons I took it so bad. To be honest with you, if I can't get it to work and I keep getting uh, Bobtail trucks, I'm actually kind of okay with that. As long as they're unique. They don't have to be uh, hauling trailers. As long as they're unique and they add more variety to the game, I'll be fine with it. I... There'll come a point where I won't even notice that they're, like, running bobtail. So I'm not going to overly worry or panic about it. Okay, whatever. I know I should care more about that, but... Uh, I just don't right now. I'm just enjoying playing. I'm still... Still having a bit of a time, and this and this game really helps relax me. It's not going to help relax me if I slam into the side of this bus. That's better. But... I've actually put... You, you know that I like a game when I put money into it. I've put I don't know how much money into League. I haven't put as much money into it lately, but I've gone back and spent a little bit of money here and there as well. Um, but I have definitely sunk money into World of Warships. I've bought doubloons three times already. And I just bought a, and with some of the doubloons I got, I bought a premium uh, tier 5 Russian cruiser. Which I think is a pretty cool ship. However, there are some ships that I will probably not get unless somebody gifts them to me. Because to me, the prices are ridiculous. Yes, that's ridiculous with cock added, basically. They're like fifty dollars. Yeah, let me run that one by you again. Fifty five oh dollars. The price of some triple A titles just for a single ship in a game. I'm sorry. I I can't see doing that, and that's not to say people don't. Because I've seen these ships in game, and from what I understand, people have even paid upwards of seventy dollars in World of Tanks. For a premium tank. The thing is, is that the premium ships really aren't better than the ships in the game. They're unique. They have some qualities that make them new unique, but they're not necessarily better. The the ship that I got, which I believe is the Muromansky. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's somewhere along those lines. That, um, that, uh, that ship is basically the Tier 5 American, um, yeah, I haven't seen a painted truck lately. Um, Shit. Oh well. <laughs> so I get for not paying attention. It's alright, I'll find a place to turn around. Like right here. <laughs> that works. Is that a painted truck? Can't tell. I'm gonna just shift the priority next game because I don't think I've seen a painted truck. Why are we going so slow?
Maybe trying to simulate the hill? I don't know. Either way. But, yeah, basically the premier Russian ship that I bought is the Omaha, the Tier 5 American cruiser, with better torpedoes, looks a little different, sounds different. That's about it. Now, the advantages, and there are some advantages, some of the advantages come from, like, um, being able to, I mean, they just took from World of Tanks on this one, being able to swap your crew from one ship to another without having to retrain them. See, in World of Warships, there are captains, yeah? You can get captains or commanders for your ship. And you can train them in different abilities. When you sell a ship, you can keep your commander. And then you can put him in another ship if you want. But that commander doesn't have familiar, you know, isn't familiar with the ship. So he has to retrain on the ship. And while he's retraining, your ship won't gain, he, um, not your ship, but, you know, he won't gain any XP towards new skills. And these are all things I'd actually really like to do videos on. Uh, other than that, you know, there's not a whole lot of benefit. It gains some extra free XP. I think it gains... There's there's a couple things about it that's supposed to make it worthwhile. And it's not terrible. They're nice little perks, but... I almost didn't see this. And there's another one here. That's real fucking pretty right there. Just be realistic. That's real pretty. So, you know, the, the ship is technically, I think, about 17 no, it's about, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe about $15, somewhere around there. It's only a tier 5. It costs 3,000 doubloons. So, yeah, it's about $15, I think. Which, for me, was fine. I just wanted a Russian ship. And I was kind of thinking about the second Russian ship. But again, up, up, upon closer inspection of that ship, that ship was basically the St. Louis. Yeah, and it, it's a Tier 3 ship, by the way. The other Russian one, wh whose name I forget... It's just a tier 3 ship. And it is basically the St. Louis. With one less gun to the side. You know, some of the stats are different. It could hit a bit further out. It's got better armor, most likely. Um, so, I'm saying there are differences. But in short, it looked like the St. Louis. Its guns were set up like the St. Louis. It had the same... No, I, I, no actually, it wasn't short from the St. Louis in terms of guns. There, shut my high beams off for you. How was that? <laughs> shut my high beams off? Fuck, I'll just turn them all off, dude. But, um... It was the St. Louis. Period. So, I decided to not get the second Russian ship. But even though the, the, the Tier 5 cruiser is basically the Omaha... I thought, man, it's all right, and it's kind of sad too because I know when the um, Trippets comes out, because uh, the German ships are supposed to be released uh, not too far from now. I don't know if they're going to come with the next patch. They have been on the test. Some of the German ships have been on the test server, but 
um, if they are or when they come out, regardless of if they are or not, the two big ships everyone's going to be looking at is the Bismarck and the uh, Trippets. They were the two major ships in the German fleet, you know, the two massive battleships. Because when you think of World War II and you think of battleships, basically two names, uh, not two, but basically three names come to mind. Plain and simple. The Bismarck is usually the first, and then if you're a bit of a uh, of a uh, World War II buff, then you also think of the uh, Yamato, or yeah, I, I you know I used to call it Yamamoto. I don't know why it's Yamato. But um, those are usually the two big names that you think of. And if you're a real um, World War II buff and you're into warships, then you also know the third one, which was a Bismarck sister ship, basically. And that was the Trippets. Now, sadly, the reality of these three battleships is they did not have a very large impact on the war. They didn't. The Bismarck and Trippets were hunted ruthlessly because they could not be allowed to run free on the oceans and cause problems with the supply lines. You know, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm pretty sure the Trippets was sunk, although I'm not entirely sure. I'm, when I say sunk, I mean enemy forces sunk it. The Bismarck was scuttled. There's no doubt about that. People try and deny it. Oh, the Bismarck was actually sunk by torpedo. No. No. There was a full-scale investigation. They actually sent um, deep-sea diving robots into the ship, into the holes, and they found that the torpedo impacts did not penetrate the citadel of the ship, and there's no way that it could have sunk from the torpedo hits. The ship was... The Bismarck was scuttled. And I was a former believer that she was sunk by British forces. But no, she was scuttled. I went and, you know, dug into the research, and you can go do it yourself. Not that hard to find. Uh, the, uh, the Yamato... I'm not sure on her history. Because I, I don't research very much, you know, in, into that. I just really love the ships. She was an impressive ship and the largest ship in the war, but she still she didn't have the greatest impact, and she was sunk, and she rolled over and actually landed um, landed in the inverted position, basically hull up on the bottom of the floor, and a lot of people think that's due to the fact that her. Uh, massive uh, pagoda mask. Are you going to ticket me? You're going to ticket me, aren't you? Amazing. Yeah, but her giant pagoda uh, mask, I call it a mask, her, her superstructure um, was so big and so heavy that it actually, when she rolled over and sunk, she never rewrited herself underwater because that pagoda was pulling her down. But as I was saying, the Trippets is going to be the premium ship, which, in truth, you know, fine, a premium battleship, not a big deal. But it's probably going to be fifty dollars, if not sixty or seventy. And it's like, why? Why make them that expensive, and why buy them? And that's a question I'm actually going to pose on the. World of Warships subreddit. You know, I'm going to ask, you know, those of you who bought these premium ships, what made you just decide to drop this much money on a single ship in a game 
you know, when you could have easily bought very, 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 you know, a, a fair variety of AAA titles. Good AAA titles. Now, we'll see. I'll tell you one thing that's been going on, man. I have been having problems with my back. And I don't know why. Not during the day, not when sitting or standing when I sleep. I only sleep for about four or five hours on one side. Then I usually get up to go to the bathroom. And then I lay back down, but I don't lay flat. I stack my pillows up in kind of a, almost like a ramp. And I lay back on them in a, in a sitting position. Well, I have been waking up sore from that sitting position and having to lay back down on my side. And when I do, my back just starts hurting. I mean, it just hurts. And it's really aggravating because it's hard to sleep. I used to sleep to about 9 o'clock, but there's no way I can do that now. I'm usually up around 7.30 because my back's in so much pain, I just can't lay down anymore. And I have not run into this problem in a long time. And it's and even with this new mattress, I had a little bit of trouble with the mattress when I started because it was so much firmer than what I was used to sleeping on. I went from a pillow top mattress to a very firm mattress. I mean, really firm mattress. And, you know, it was no problem for me. Now, I'm just waking up so sore, and I don't know why. And, uh, I, I just don't get it. You know, when I first started with the new mattress, yeah, I had a little bit of trouble, but I got used to it. And I've been fine until recently. And the interesting thing about it is, is I've lost weight. When I last got weighed, as I mentioned a few videos, uh, I don't know how many videos ago, but a, little, but a while ago, when I last got weighed, I clocked in at 10 pounds less. I went from 471 pounds to 461 pounds. 10 pounds. And yet, now I'm suffering back problems. Now I'm suffering these issues. It's like, why? The only thing I can think of is that uh, since I've been weed eating the yard and I've been digging out weeds uh, occasionally after, you know, in between. I did that for a little while. Now I've gone back to weed eating the yard. The only thing I can think of is that I'm doing something while weed eating that bothers me at the end of the, you know, at the night while I'm sleeping. Because when you're weed eating, you're in a kind of a slumped over position. You know, you're slightly bent forward. And you're not standing straight. And I do that for a little while. And then I actually will stand straight. And I'll use the weed eater one-handed. Yes, I actually use it one-handed. And then I'll bend forward again for a little bit. And two-handed. Then I'll stand up. And I'll bend forward. And I'll stand up. And this could be the issue. Being in the slump position. Then standing up. And then going back to slump. And then standing up. This could eat. I'm going to get fuel here. Just because we're here. So this could easily be the issue, you know. But I don't know. And, you know, it could be, too, that I have not taken a break from weed eating. This is just because I don't know, you know, where the gas station is. I was already down to, uh, close to a quarter tank. And I just figured, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to fuel here. Well, there is a painted truck, and it's Bobtail. And there is another painted truck, and it's Bobtail. So, it looks like 
nothing has changed. Now, it could be that I still have an old Jazzy Cat mod. It could be pull and rebuilding causing the issues. There are different things I can try. I can try and move Jazzy Cat's uh, uh, mod all the way to the top, make it number one priority over pull and rebuilding, and that might fix the issue. I don't know. But it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't kill me. But I'm going to keep tinkering with it because everyone says, you know, it, it's a mod conflict that's causing it. And I don't want to pull, um, I mean, I really don't want to pull my pull and rebuilding mod or my pro mods just to get that. I'll pull painted truck first. I'd really like to make it to the town with the ferry before we end this run for today. That way I can pop into a garage real quick and check on my lights and what the fuck happened to them. You know what it was? I think it's because I looked at other bull bars and I wasn't paying attention. It might have been because I looked at other bull bars. I don't know. Bull bars and top bars. I don't know. You know, every time I see one of those buses go by, one of those bigger ones, those coaches, I get a little nostalgic for driving. I really do miss, uh, I really, really, really do miss driving, uh, coaches. I truly do. I miss doing my tours, interacting with people, being out on the road every day. It wasn't as stressful as people think it would be. It's really not. I, I have... A natural entertaining talent that doesn't even come through here. I know a lot of people say I'm entertaining and that I'm I'm good with it and whatnot, and I really appreciate that. But when I'm interacting with people uh, face to face, you know, it, it, I take it to like a whole nother level. I only ever had one bad tour review, only one. It was my very first one. My very first one. I was very nervous, I, and I I just sucked. I kept apologizing and kept saying I was new and it, it really ruined the people's experience. But after that I decided to buck up and I really went gung-ho when it came to um, to doing my tours. I went out and I bought books, I did research, I talked to other tour drivers and I came up with this huge spiel. I came up with this huge spiel and, you know, just kept talking and different things. I learned about plants and animals, invasive species, different fruits, all kinds of things. And I always had a good tour. I always had a bunch of... Uh, good people and we always had a good time I was just a natural at it and I took to doing tours even when I wasn't driving tours see because I was one of the newer HANA tour drivers I didn't have priority obviously so I'd get stuck doing different runs and one of them I commonly did was uh, Kamoli Beach Run basically you pick up the people um, you do it in two phases, basically. You pick up the people from the um, boat. You take them to Kihei, to the beach. You drop them off. 
And then um, you go back, you pick up another load, you take them back, drop them off. And as you're dropping, and then you drop them off, then you wait about an hour. Then you go back and pick up the people uh, from the first round and bring them back. And then you pick up the people again. Uh, or you go back and pick up the people from the second round and bring them back. Well, I toured them both ways. I, a lot of people, you know, I, a lot of the other drivers, I said, well, I take my people on a tour. They go, how do you do that? There's not that much. There's a lot between there. If you look, oops, I accidentally kicked off the cruise control. There's a lot that you can tour people on if you try. You don't even have to talk about what's around. You can talk about the history of Hawaii. You can talk about the mountains. You can talk about, you know, these people are probably not going to go on a big tour. So you give them the big tour. You know, because you've got about 45 minutes from when you pick them up to when you drop them off. Rather than ride in silence, tour them. And I and that's a run that you you can accept tips on, but you usually didn't get tips. Yeah, because you were just a driver, you're just driving them there and back. Not me. <laughs> Not me, folks. It helps to be in gear. And look, a garage. Nah, that's all right. So, yeah. Oh, bad things happen there. That bus had to back up. Bad things are happening again. So, I gave them, a and I always got tips. I'd get $1 to $2 per person. And you would say, oh, that's not a lot. When you're hauling 30 people, that's 30 bucks. Twice, that's 60 at least. I would get at least $60 a day doing just the beach runs. And that's on top of my... Um, uh, my usual. Yeah, it's like it took my lights away. Oh, well, no wonder. The Mark IIs aren't here. Must be the way I loaded them. You see, I've only got the Mark Ones. It must be because I've changed uh, priority that it changed the lights. It's all right. I can switch the priorities around again. I'm pretty sure I know how. But that'll work. That's fine. Uh, yeah. And we'll just check the service. Yeah, it's good enough. Those are fine. Ooh, I wasn't watching that. I am an idiot. Oh. <laughs> Must turn lights on. Drive on to the beach? Why not?
right, here we are. And, oh boy, multiple destinations. Am I going straight to Iceland? I technically should be, huh? Yeah, I'm taking the straight to Iceland one. All right. How much further do we have? Let's pull forward a little and find out. How much further is the rest of this trip? Oh, yeah. 841 kilometers. Yep. That's definitely another episode. Hopefully not two. Pretty sure it's just one episode. And we get to see a good part of this area. Nice. I'm actually looking forward to that. But, uh, oops. Come on. That's going to be me done for this episode, folks. I hope you've enjoyed watching this as much as I've been enjoying bringing it to you.